Hi everyone, so you would have seen the documentary which we've done yesterday on Bobby Robson and we're still down here and we thought since there's a bit of a carry on with uh, the club at the minute I thought I'll get somebody else's perspective instead of obviously hearing from me so um, Will, I'll let you take over and your perspective of the, the transfers, the non-transfers, the lack of money the Rafa Benitez contract situation, the share prices it's not great at the minute is it? It's an absolute mess um, I don't, I mean I, I kind of give up talking about it um, it's just, I don't understand it from a business point of view, from a footballing point of view, from any point of view. I don't think any of it makes sense. Um, we're not spending any money. We have Premier League money that came in, 150 million or whatever it was, um, that has disappeared into completely thin air. Um, we've made three transfers, two of which were players that we had on loan for the second half of last season. Um, and then a direct replacement for a Marino in key. And we made 10 million and don't know where that's gone. Um, so we've got exactly the same squad that we finished. Uh, we haven't improved. We've got three weeks to go. Um, shirt prices, are, shirt prices are up through the roof. Season ticket prices are up through the roof. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to know where our money's gone, because I, I don't see how this has carried on. And from a year, a year ago. I kind of sort of accepted the fact that we've been to the championship, we paid a lot of money to be there and to get the squad together that we needed to. But then after a year that we'd, you know, we saw all the account stuff, but still after a year in the Premier League, once we got the money in, then maybe something. But we've got a manager in place who's a world-class manager. We haven't given him any money. Um, whereas when we had Steve McLaren in charge, we gave him 80 million quid, but we won't give that to Rafa Benitez. It just perplexes me and I'm, I'm almost bored talking about this now. <laughs> well, we all are, aren't you? Yeah, I think Will's hit the nail on the head, really. This summer was supposed to be a summer of celebration. You know, we've just finished 10th in the Premier League. You know, one of our best finishers in a long time. Uh, Rafa Benitez, you know, he's been buying players on a shoestring budget and that's happened, you know, over the course of last season. Now, this summer, you know, it was promise of, you know, having extra funds, you know, to buy, you know, decent players, you know, trying to sort of break our transfer record which we haven't done in such a long time you know since Michael Owen and when you're only getting players on loan and you know you're paying in instalments that's very worrying now considering you know we finished 10th in the Premier League uh, there's money there to spend where is it that's the question and now you know the owner has a right to to say oh you're gonna have to pay you know high prices for the season tickets you know for match day tickets and 65 pound for you know the sort of the, the you know the kits for next season now which I think is a bit of a joke but I'm sort of on the other side where fans aren't you know they, they don't have to buy it if they don't want to but I could totally understand you know the frustration I know there's a lot of fans out there that'll be thinking you know well you know he doesn't have to have the right to put it up but you've already got to look at the previous prices you know if you're paying £40, £50, £55 from last season the owner's going to think well you know we've or you've you have bought those tick, those kits in the past. What's the difference? Speaking of those um, them share prices, obviously I've had my say on it. And the, what really alarmed me is that the sports director forcing fans to go and get a personalised shirt. I know it'll come in the club store and it'll come down in price likely, but for £65, and I've already said this, for what, we've, what have we achieved? We didn't win trophies, let's be honest, and that's horrible to say it, we didn't. We haven't we've been starved of success since 1969. And then before that was, what, 1955 with the FA Cups? So we're buying something because we will buy it and that's the thing I don't like because Mike Ashley will know that we will go out and buy. It might not be the tune shirt, I'm not getting the home one, I'm getting the away one, but I'll, he knows that's coming. He knows that's going to be pocket change in his, and for God's sake, if you are going to buy a shirt, buy it in store, not online, because at least then the club gets some money from it. I can't justify that. I can understand slightly with the season ticket rise because the club actually put a discount on that. Am I for it? No, of course not. Um, for me personally, it's only £6 rise per month. That's nothing for me to go and watch the lads. But what I do ask, though, is if there is shirt prices increases, which I can't justify, if there is ticket price increases, where's this money? The lads have just said it there. Where, why aren't we splashing the cash? You know, getting players that Rafa wants. This reason, there's a reason why Rafa Benitez is hanging on and hanging on and hanging on and not tying his contract. We've only got three weeks, under three weeks now, to the transfer window closes and this is my all we could have the squad for the rest of the season again there's talk you know Isaac Hayden one suit there's talk of Chancellor Bemba Jack Colback, Henri Savé there's absolutely loads that can go on Mitrovic is another one it's just there's nothing be justified yeah, so. no it's again nail on the head it's 
I almost just can't bring bring words out to say it. I mean, the stuff, some of the stuff that's come out recently about. Uh, I mean, we'll start with the every punny, every punny, <laughs> can't even speak. Uh, every penny uh, the club generates. Well, we know for a fact speak because for, for me, yeah. if he says that, because the minute that everyone's like on a lull, everyone's like flat. It's pre-season. It should be the opposite. It should be like, oh, can not we? Hear? It's like that. You should yeah. be like that. But now it's like, oh. It's flat, there's no money. Lee Charney, for me, has to come out and prove us wrong. Exactly. At, at least come out and say, well, there is actually this amount of money to play with. Then at least to put us at mind, at rest. And well Not even say that, because that can, if, if everyone knows we've got this money, then they can do yeah, whatever with the prices. But at least to at least say it to Rafa, because it seems that Rafa doesn't, Rafa doesn't even seem to know what his budget is. But this whole point about every penny the club generates, I kind of... You know, I do like to kind of sort of see it from both sides. When when that first when that statement first came out, I kind of thought, okay, I see what he's getting at because obviously, if he wants to sell the club, he's not going to put any money into it. So to make a self-sustaining club, you know, it's kind of the aim of and dream of every owner that you don't have to invest any money in it. So when we didn't spend that much money, I thought, okay. But now, a year later, there's no excuse to not spend money. That money has been flowing into this football club and that hasn't been spent. 10 million for Mikel Marino, probably another eight for Chancel and Member, 20 for Mitrovic, um, 150 million pounds worth of Premier League money, a 50 million, million lump sum. Sissoko again. Yep, 6 million for Sissoko again, 5 million for Wijnaldum, a 50 million pound lump sum from the Premier League that's meant to be spent on transfers. And we've only spent four million pounds on a goalkeeper, which I think it would have been harder to not sign to Bravka than it, than it was to sign him. We've got Keon a free. Kennedy on loan again. The likes of Huddersfield have a bigger transfer record than Newcastle being in the Premier League a year. So have Brighton, so have Fulham. Fulham has spent £80 million on Serie. He was meant to be going to Barcelona a year ago. He was meant to be going to Arsenal and Chelsea this summer. There's no excuses for the money to not be there. And to, I mean, to regurgitate what he said this year, I mean, it just shows that he's clearly hiding something. And this whole standoff thing between um, Mike Ashley and Rafa Benitez about... Once you sign a contract, I'll give you money. Okay, first of all, there's no assurances of that because in history gone by, the 10 years of Mike Ashley's on the club, he has never stuck to his word. Never ever stuck to his word. And you only have to look at uh, what Kevin Keegan said about Mike Ashley and about how he went on about that to know that he cannot be trusted. Um, so there's no way that Rafa Benitez would sign a contract. Plus also, that conversation should be the other way around. I'll sign a contract once you actually give me some transfer money. Because in a year's time, Rafa Benitez can walk away for absolutely nothing with his dignity hell high. Not one single fan is going to turn against Rafa Benitez for walking away. It'll all be on Mike Ashley and what. Because he ha- and, and it will absolutely implode. And I don't know what we're going to do after Rafa Benitez. For me, it kind of just feels like the begin- beginning of the end. And then to see the report yesterday where it was we put in a four million pound loan offer for Salman Rondon. I actually felt like embarrassed more than anything. You know, it's a 16 and a half million pound player. You know, fair enough, Rondon is not my first choice. I wanted plea. We couldn't stump up two million pounds for him, the two million extra pounds for him that it required. But we're going to put four million pound for a loan offer for Rondon. Who's out of contract next year? Who's out of contract in the year? From right. a business point of view, it makes sense because it's like four million pound or sixteen oh, million. Yeah, but West not Brom are not going to do that. No, that's I've relegated West Brom. We're not going to let just let go twelve million pounds. Like four million pounds. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, and it's just the fact that it's it's constantly. I mean, the expression is used: wheeling and dealing. You know, it's a ch- he's a championship player who's not got a proven. Pr- you know, his pr- record in Premier League is like twenty goals in hundred in hundred games. If, in my mind, that's not great. In my mind, that's not great, and we could do a lot better. You know, I have rambled on a lot, but it's embarrassing. It's genuinely embarrassing about what position we put in. I think Sunderland has spent more money than us. They're in League One. I give up. Genuinely giving up a lot. Yeah, I think they both hit the nail on the head, really. It's been a summer of frustration yet again. Not for the first time, you know, history tells you that Mike actually doesn't spend you know, money on the football club. What I'm more frustrated about, and I do believe in what Rafa did say the other day, that he had targets lined up. You know, he had players that he wanted in you know, by certain deadlines and again, not for the first time, it happened in 2017, the players just haven't come through the door that he wanted and, you know, we're, we're sort of a nearly club when it comes to buying players, you know, like Will said, you know, it's, there's like a million pound in it, two million pound, for me it's next to no money, I mean, in the Premier League, you know, when you've got like money flying about within the TV rights and things like that, it's just shocking. Would you quite happy to go into debt to, to achieve? Hell yeah. 
I think a lot of clubs. All the best clubs are. People slay at Freddie Shepard's, right? God bless his soul. But he ploughed money at the club. And yes, and I got winning debt, but we used to compete. We used to be in the top four when Bobby Robson was here. Well, I'll just tell you this. I mean, you know, we're not a business. We're a football club. You know, we are a football club with passionate supporters who, you know, love the club through thick and thin. You know, we go to work and then we we'll go and support the lads. And for us, it, you know, we don't earn a lot of money, you know, in, in this area of the world. And we just want a team that, you know, that want to try. And you know, I can't fault the squad for what they've done last season, but we just want a bit more strength within the squad in key areas. Yeah, and a bit of ambition. And you, you mentioned Freddie Shepard, yes, you know, back in the day when we were finishing, you know, the likes of second and just missing out on the Premier League title to where we are now, you know, to, you know, we've had a couple of seasons in the Championship and finishing 10th. We're no longer around those European spots anymore. You know, we've went from the Champions League to Europa League and then the sudden decline, you know, to the Championship and it's very frustrating and, you know, going in for the likes of Rondon, that just shows on, you know, there's no ambition within the football club to really progress and that's what I'm really frustrated about in what I'm also frustrated about is how long it's taken just to get Kendi back at Newcastle. Uh, that was another one, which I'm glad he's here. But why didn't we go and get him a lot earlier than we did and then we would have freed up a bit more time to try and get somebody through the door? You know, you, you, you mentioned the likes of play. Why couldn't we go and pay the extra couple of million pounds and get him in through the door? It, something like installments. Yeah. What, what makes me laugh is, you know, we get 52,000 through this door, you know, week in, week out and you know we've got the, the best support when it comes to away games and the money that we plough in this football club to how we can't spend money on decent players is beyond me to how we can't even pay the wages and you know there's clubs in the championship that yeah that do spend more money than us which is a bit it's it's really really annoying um, Mike Ashley I'm not surprised if I'm honest you know he's been here since 2007-2008 uh, he's never really changed he doesn't really care about the football club and all he care, cares about is his business and I'm not really surprised, you know, the way it's gone this summer. I think it was always going to be like that. You know, when the club are on such a high, he likes to put the you know, the fans back down again. And this is not the first time it's happened. It's happened, you know, years gone by. And, you know, you mentioned Steve McLaren. Giving Steve McLaren £80 million, I wouldn't even trust him with a million pound. And we got relegated. Oh, that might like. Uh, when Mike asked you the interview last year, um, and he said that, um, in all, in, and I think it is a fair point to him, that when he bought the club, and compared to how it is now, football changed with how Man City was bought, yeah. about how, how much that money, about how much money they plough in, and you know, particularly when you looked at how um, PSG bought Neymar, they effectively had a whole country finance that. He's that not, he's not, not going to do that. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's not going to do that. We're not expecting him to do that. You know, we finished... Uh, you know, in the in the same ballpark as West Ham and Leicester, I think as, as two we examples. Finished above West Ham, didn't we, we finished above West Ham. We finished just below Leicester, and, and uh, we beat them at their stadium with the squad that we had. Leicester this summer, yep, they've sold Mares, yep, fine, but they spent twenty five million pound on Madison, a, a guy who's not played a minute of Premier League football. We West Ham, look at the oh, look at the play, one, yeah, one player. exactly. Look at West Ham, the players that they've bought in and spent That's the money great. on. They've got Yarmolenko, Wilshire. Felipe Anderson for £40 million, uh, Issa Diop think, for £25 thinking million. Well, pounds. About, speaking of West Ham, is obviously the West Ham lads will stick up for us saying this, is that they they turned on their owners yeah. and they, they've acted. Yeah. I mean, we've turned on our owner numerous of times and we've got an owner who just wants this and we're not going anywhere. But the, the thing is, in the Olympic Stadium, it was evident, you know, that they were going towards the board. You know, they, it was getting to the point where it was getting scary, and there was, I, I don't know what match it was, but it was getting a bit out of Burnley. control. And Burnley. Burnley, yeah, and even the Burnley fans were saying, "Whoa, that, that's scary!" That, and they were getting really like vicious. But to be fair, you know, we, I'm not saying that we should be, do, you know, we should be going throwing stones and whatever, like Ashley. But we need to do something. You know, we need to make a stand. And I feel Rafa Benitez's yeah, frustration. I, I, I don't feel that a protest will do anything. No. It's well, the need to be. Need we've been relegated twice. We've yeah. been relegated twice under this owner. Mm -hmm. I don't know what more evidence he needs. I don't know what more he needs to do. The way that you make. I mean, if you go into football to make money, you're an idiot. If you go into, but if you, so you go into football for ambition, and if you actually do want the club to be self-sustaining, you don't have to have the, these massive losses that you have to sustain for. Then don't put us there in the first place. Spending twenty million pounds on on say play. Let's just say play, and then that striker. Gets twenty goals, gets twenty goals a season, and gets in, gets in Europe. That twenty million pound more than makes up for itself. Than if you got relegated because you didn't buy anybody. You know this league is so tight. 
you know, there were only a few points between 7th and 17th. I think Newcastle, we could easily finish 7th. We could easily finish 17th. Well, it's that close. Seven. If Burnley can finish 7th with not the best squad in the world, then that tells you a lot, doesn't it? Exactly. I think Wolves have got a shout of finishing in the Europa League spot, you know, with the money they've spent. You know, it is actually worth investing. And I don't see how he doesn't see this. About how he hasn't seen the two massive hits he's taken, you know, being relegated and thought, right, we can't let this happen again. He's doing exactly the same, and he doesn't. He hasn't learned from his mistakes. It, it just doesn't make sense. So is, it, is, it genuinely doesn't make sense. Is, is, doesn't a big question go back to the Amanda Stavely uh, story then? That which was at the start of the season. You know, he wanted to sell the club. Nothing came of it, and he's kind of punishing the fans really for for kind of yes, come on, you know, let let let's get it to happen. You know, I'm here now. I'm I'm just going to go back to what I was. But doing. Someone wants to sell the club. He's being incredibly difficult about it. I mean, if we think what, because he initially tried, what was it, three hundred million? That was the figure. They went 250 with the whole thing about a sort of relegation clause. And with the, with the relegation clause thing, I think it was about they got half the money back if the club got relegated. I didn't think that was personally like an acceptable offer. But then it comes back to the summer, the club is safe, and we can. Th- and I, th- I thought, okay, now we can negotiate. No, we bumped the price up to 400 million. See, for me, if it's such, if it's such a burden for Mike Ashley, he would, he would clear off and he would take a loss. Even if it's 50 million to Mike Ashley's note, if it's under or over. Um, if he's not, if his heart isn't in it, and he's not going to put money in there, get lost. But he just he's happy to clear, pick up the money. He's going to make, if if he sold the club for three hundred million pounds, he still is making. I believe he still actually makes a profit on it. So what? Why are you staying? What, what? What's he staying for? Money in there. Exactly. It's, it's money. It's because basically, you know, each week we're going to the ground, we're lining his pockets. You know, we are paying. You know, for the merchandise, we're paying for the match day tickets. You know, uh, you know. The, yeah, he's got sponsorships, and, and this is the thing. While Mike Ashley is still, you know, getting the money, he's going to stay here. And I'm not saying that you know we, we shouldn't uh, back the club for the thing. I think we should, but that is a sad reality. And the thing is, we love this club, and I've said that so many times, and that's the reason why we won't stay away. Because without the, the thing is, without the uh, fans, the club's nothing. And that's, and that's the thing is, when we have fans who comment and saying, "Don't go to games, don't buy things," I can't do that. Yeah, you I cannot do that because I love this club. This is what every day I spend five or six hours researching Newcastle United every single day, and then I make the matches. And it's, the general fan can't do that, but Mike Ashley knows that. He's got like he's got a dangle in the carrot, and it's 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 a vicious, it's a vicious circle in it. Um, I think we'll wrap up. Well, this video went on for a little bit long. We'll turn this into a podcast, actually. We'll get this on iTunes and SoundCloud as well. Let us know what you think on that. It'll be interesting to see what you lot think of it all. Cheers, bye.